Hello there, Andre here from Chakra UI and welcome to Chakra Shorts. In this short, I'll show you how you can create a dynamic shadow of any image. This is the preview of what we'll be making today. Alright, so let's begin. Here I have a code sandbox with the Next.js project set up and the Chakra UI dependencies installed. You can get the boilerplate of this in the description below. The first thing on our agenda is to set up Chakra by adding the Chakra provider. The Chakra provider wraps your website with a context which consists of the theme itself, the color mode, CSS reset and much more. To start off, we'll need some images. I'm using stock photos from Unsplash and I'll have all the links to the images in the description down below. Next, we'll import the VStack component from Chakra UI. After that, we'll wrap our content with the VStack and add a padding of 24 and spacing of 32 to separate the images we'll be using. Next, we'll create the component itself. I'll create a components folder for a better file structure. Now let's initialize the component. I'll call it dynamic shadow image and also don't forget to export it. Now import the box component from Chakra UI and let's return some text for now. Then we'll head into our index file and map out all the images with our newly created component. Next, we need to take care of the props that our component will receive. In this case, we only need the source of the image. So now let's head back to the dynamic shadow image component and do just that. We'll define the type, which I'll call props, and we'll have a property called source, which is a string. Now let's go back to our index file once again and send the source property to our child component. And be sure to add a key prop so we don't have any errors in the console. The box component will wrap two image components inside of it. We're doing this because one of the images is going to be the shadow itself with an absolute positioning. The box component will have a relative position so we can absolutely position the children inside the box. Okay, now let's set the CSS properties to the image components. The first image component will be the shadow itself. Let's set the source which will be received from the parent component. Then set the width and height. I'll go for 80, this can be changed if you'd like. I'll add a border radius to create a smoother look to the image. The value will be large with just 8 pixels. Next on the list is the object fit property which we will set to cover. This way the image maintains the aspect ratio while filling the element's entire content box. Like we previously said, the image position will be set to absolute since this is the shadow and let's not forget to add the inset property which will be zero. For those wondering, the inset CSS property sets the top, right, bottom and left positions to zero. The most important part to achieve the shadowy effect is the blur. So we'll add the filter property which will have blur of 16 pixels. And last but not least, we'll set the z-index to 0 and we'll scale the image so we can see it once we add the main image. Now we'll add properties to the actual image itself. To start off, we'll set the z-index to 100 and the position to relative. Like we mentioned, the source will be passed from the parent component. The following properties will be just like the previous component. The width and the height will be set to 80, the border radius to large and the object fit to cover. And that's it! For a better effect, I like to put the background to a darker color, so let's set the BG property to gray 800. That's about it, I hope you guys enjoyed this short and the link to the finished code sandbox and all the relevant links will be in the description down below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.